along to hear from today. But I just want to set out what we're going to do next. We've got the AGM on the 14th of February, and you're all welcome to come along to that. And then we're setting up a series of workshops to work out, because today is about supporting the principle of financial education for young people. I'm delighted you all support it. Thank you very much. But then onwards, in those workshops, we're going to work out what is the best way to deliver that. And then we will go and lobby the ministers with a huge amount of support that you've all given us. And the two organisations in particular I want to thank, who will then be following me to speak. First of all is PFEG, the national charity, who I know have met many MPs over many, many years. And actually this all started by me asking an innocent parliamentary question when I first got elected. And they kindly came along and said, well, we can help you ask a few more and do it in a good constructive manner. Uh, and fast forward to now. And also a big thank you to Martin Lewis, the money-saving expert, who is responsible for all of the MPs' uh, email boxes being full. But it's, uh, as I said, it's a, an opportunity to actually send back one saying, yes, I support it. Be grateful I'm your MP. So I'm delighted now to introduce Wendy van der Hender, the Chief Executive of PFEG, who will set out why it's been such an important cause that they've been com campaigning on for many, many years. Thank you. Wow, it's pretty special, isn't it? Um, some of you have been around for a long time and knew me ten years ago when we first started, and we would never ever imagine we could be in this situation, in this room, with this much support. So thank you very much indeed for all of you for coming and for uh, providing the support as we create the APPG together. Um, Justin, thank you so much for all the work that you've done. You know, your hard work, your commitment, your dedication. Um, he's one of this, this breed of new MPs, you know, really hard working, genuinely <coughs> committed to a cause. And we're just delighted that the cause he decided to take up was the one of personal finance education. And thank you also to, to Stella Creasy and Duncan Haynes, who are going to be officers with the APPG. Uh, we do appreciate that parliamentarians are taking so much interest in this really important subject. Now, for those of you who don't know about PFA, it's the Personal Finance Education Group. We're a single-issue charity. It's all we do, all we talk about, all we care about. And we've been making progress. What's happened over the last few years is that we've been winning hearts and minds. And there is some excellent work happening in schools. We have good, inspiring teachers. We have head teachers who have embraced it, who have, uh, who have integrated into the whole of their school, uh, you know, each year group of, of the school. <coughs> and we have over 30,000 teachers who have actively joined our database representing 88% of secondary schools and 50% of primary schools. However, that's, that's kind of the good news, but the bad news is progress is painfully slow. And what we need is we need extra impetus to move on to the next level, to make sure that we can actually make, ensure that all young people in this school with the confidence, the skills, and the knowledge that they need to be able to participate fully in society. If we get, you know, nobody at the moment is forced to teach financial education. So it's great that so many schools are doing it, but wouldn't it be better if everybody did it? And unless we grasp the nettle, and unless schools embrace this properly, then we will still be in a situation where young people are leaving school financially ill-equipped for life. It will affect their physical health, their mental health. They will have acrimonious divorces. <coughs> they will find that they're worrying about work, their money worries instead of doing the work they're being paid to do. And unless we get it firmly embedded so that every school is required to teach it, we will really pay the price. Not just on a personal level, but as a society. <coughs> it's going to cost all of us. And it will also cost the finance sector as they continue to sell the wrong products to consumers who do not know the right decisions to take. So, <laughs> okay, a bit of a personal agenda there, isn't it? <laughs> so what do we want with the MPs and peers? There are 141 of you. This is absolutely amazing. We think it's the largest APPG. And even if it isn't, it's still pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> so we want you to be champions. We want you to, I think, do two basic things, really. 
We want you to campaign and be a champion for financial education, persuade the Department of Education that it needs to have a proper place in the curriculum so that every school is required to teach it. That's both primary and secondary. And also we want you to go into your constituencies and tell your schools. You're the people who have that local knowledge. You have good relationships with your schools. Make sure they know what we're doing and what other organisations <coughs> in this room are doing. Make sure they know how to access the help that is available. And if you've got any rich friends or connected to any big businesses, then you can also try and put them in our direction as well. Because inevitably these things need to be paid for. What I want to do now is, is to hand over to Martin. And I, I watched Martin in action this morning. He was talking about bad debt. And, um, and he clearly inspired the, these young people to start thinking in a way they perhaps not thought of before. It was fantastic to watch him in action. But not every class can have, not every class or every school can have a Martin Lewis on the staff. So we have to do it differently. Now at PFED, we know what to do and how to do it. So I look forward to working with you all in the future to work out how we can take this very, very important issue forward. Thank you.